this afternoon session, what's in the bag. I hope that um, through this session that you will see some props and gadgets that will help you work with your singers in children's choir or your singers at school or your singers anywhere that you can kind of help use to engage them in learning about singing and learning how to make their voices sound better. I'm going to be sharing some things that I've just found work for me as a music educator and then I'm going to share a few things from this book. I don't know if you've seen this book, Gadgets for Singing. This is a really, really <coughs> good book and um, it's written by Christy Els Elsner and it's published by Shawnee Press, Hal Leonard. But it's a really good book. It's on the list. But this is going to be one of my resources that I'm going to be using. And another resource that I'm going to be using today is from one of my favorite writers, Madeline Bridges, Sing Together Children. If you do not have this book, this is a book you need. This is, this is a, a practical book for all ages of children, and it's great because she tells you how uh, to use the different songs to teach singing skills. Not only does she write instructions, but she has a DVD that you can look at and watch her working with actual children. So I did not mean to do that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> technology, oh well. Anyway, and then another book that I have gotten into recently is this book called Games That Sing. And this is a book by Loya Beausoleil and Leah Wells. And um, these ladies have literally taken songs that you already know. Most of these, I mean, about 97% of the songs that are in this book, you already know. But what they've done is they've put in a little collection. And they might have slightly changed a melody um, part here and there, or they might have slightly changed a wording, but basically all the stuff in here are songs that are folk songs that you will probably recognize. Then another book that I use a lot, and if you know anything about John Fire Robin's work, is the Book of Canons. John Fire Robin is a researcher, a teacher, is excellent in his knowledge and work with children and this is a wonderful book of canons and it has like so many canons in it that you uh, think that maybe you've learned in a workshop somewhere or maybe you heard as a child but you don't know where to find it this is a really good resource for that and this is through GIA publications and all those things should be on your resource page and then Rollo Dearworth is one of my favorites in working with children and children's voice Choir Builders is a really good book for helping um, learn about some different kinds of warm-ups and stuff to do with children. And this also has a CD with it and the printed music. He has two levels of this. He has one that's for beginning children and one that's for older. And this one um, he wrote with Emily Crocker, who's also a composer as well. So we're going to be pulling some songs from some of those resources. <laughs> And then we're going to be using singing games to help us work on developing vocal skills. Um, for those of you that have not been in one of my sessions, my name is Teresa Granger. I am a public school music teacher. I teach kindergarten through fifth grade every day. Next <coughs> week we start school. A week from the day we start school. Oh, wow. I know. I know. And so I just checked my email while ago and I got the back to school letter from my principal. And I was like, I'll read that tomorrow. <laughs> but anyway, um, but yeah, we start school. I mean, it's teachers back next week and students the next week, but still that's early. But um, anyway, I do teach public school music, so I do what you do. I also coordinate the children's choirs in my church, and then I direct the older children's choirs, and then I write for Growing in Grace. So anyway, I've actually worked with children in all capacities. So if I'm not, I just am going to share with you things that have worked for me. And if you have questions or things to add to this, please feel free to do that. So, what's in the bag? How many of you have always known as a teacher that you have to have a bag of tricks? <laughs> and the quicker you develop that bag of tricks, and the quicker you find some strategies that are maybe unique, the better you are at helping to engage kids. So we're going to talk about why it would be important to use props 
and gadgets to help us learn about our singing voices. So it helps you rethink our teaching methods. It allows the teacher to be more creative. It gets the t attention of the singers, and it makes the rehearsal room inventive and energetic. Now, I had some problems while I go with my PowerPoint, so that's why I'm just going to leave it this size. This is what's on your paper, because it froze on me while I go, and as long as it's working, we're just going to keep it <laughs> So this is why you would use these things, is because of that. So then, where do you get these things? Grocery store, Target, Dollar Store, Walmart, donations from your parents. You might say, ask a parent in children's cards, can you send a whole packet of colored straws? Can you send a whole packet of pipe cleaners? And usually, they'll do that for you if, you, if they know that you're going to be using in choir. And then, look in your drawers and closets, because especially if you buy this book, she uses a whisk, she uses like wooden cooking spoons, she uses a mirror, lots of different things to um, help children learn about their singing voices. And we talked about where to get them. Now the benefits of using props and gadgets, and I'm going through all of this first because we're going to do some things in just a minute. It helps the singer develop a self-awareness of what they're doing. You can say, oh, I need for you to make your eyebrows go up, or I need for you to do this with your mouth, and they might do it, they might not. But if you give them a prop, or if you give them something to actually use, then they're going to be more apt to do it with you. So, the benefits of using props and gadgets. We're going to use a cookie, a slinky. We're not using toothpicks today, but I'll tell you about the toothpicks. Straws. Talk about flashlights, stickers, Hershey's Kisses, Jolly Ranchers, and pipe cleaners to help us learn about using and developing musical skills. Also today, we're going to take some songs from the Growing in Grace curriculum, and I'm going to show you where they emphasize singing skills. So I want you to look first. When you see a poster or something on the wall that makes you think it's going to be teaching a singing skill, point to it point to something that you see. Okay, there. What about here? What about, what about behind the dogs? Yes. What about, where, where do you see over there? Energize and arch the phrase. What about here? Be a strong singer. Now, so you, I, and this is just a sampling of what's in the fall curriculum. But because Growing in Grace writes so well, and because they have the singer and the development of the singing voice in mind constantly in every aspect of the writing process, they are constantly making visuals and things for you to have as a choir leader so that you can develop that voice. Now, this is one thing that I'm going to show you in the fall curriculum that's going to be really beneficial for you. It comes print ready and it's be a strong singer and these are all things that you add on so you can add them on one at a time you can say put three of them up and say we're going to focus on these on a particular night or you can pick an anthem out of the growing grace curriculum that you're working on that needs especially one of these things like breathing deeply it might have long phrases and you would put that one up there we're going to work on this one tonight and this is how we're going to do it so these are add-ons, and what I recommend, I did tape with them, and I laminated everything, but what I would do for permanent exposure is I would get Velcro, mm -hmm. and Velcro these, and you might get the children to help you decide which ones you're working on, too, after you work on an anthem. So this is going to be a really good one. So this one's really key. How many of you had a little orange bracelet in your... All right, does everybody have one? If you don't have one, we're going to get you one. All right? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Right here. All right, that's coming in just a second. So what I need you to do 
is I need you to sing a song first. And then we're going to, some of you might know this song, some of you might not know this. I'm going to sing it, you sing after me. Come into his presence singing. allergic to dyes that are in colored candy and so the Tootsie Roll is just a good thing and if they say they don't like them just say you just it's okay you don't have to take it this this is just helping us work on our singing voice tonight so that is a little song coming to his present singing Alleluia it's anonymous but um, John Horman set it to music and this piece this book that's published by Avignon Press this is also on your resource list faith songs and it has lots of really really good children's songs that are not too long that can be what 
Gorman. Mm-hmm. John Gorman. And it's a really good resource to do that. Now, we are going to do another cool song, and I have something for you. Got to see where I put it. All right. How many of you have trouble sometimes getting your kids to sing up in their head voice? Matter of fact, before we go there, who can give, raise your hand and let's see what are some common issues that we all face. We already talked about vowels and how important they are. What are some common issues that we have with children in singing? And consonants. And consonants. What else? Breath. Breath. Breath support, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Getting that phrase. Mm-hmm. They sing from here. I mean, everything is right here. And they don't know how to switch over. Right. What you what you say? They're infected with pop style. Yes, they are. <laughs> they are. And that's what we were talking about in a little round table discussion a while ago. It's very important. I have parents all the time ask me, should my child take voice lessons? And then I also have them ask me who would be someone to teach them voice. And this is my response. Children do not need to be taking voice lessons. Children need to be singing in a choir. Mm -hmm. And if you sing in a choir, then you're going to learn how to sing individually and blend, which is so important. And you're also going to learn good vocal skills. Also, sometimes people that teach voice and teach voice to children don't know enough about teaching voice. It's not just singing. And they teach incorrect habits that can harm the voice. So... I personally say children do not need to take voice. If you absolutely want your child to take voice, then I would at least wait till they're in high school. But not, I I prefer, wait till college. And so, but anyway, any other common issues? Uncertain singers. Uncertain singers, yes. I've got a little boy right now that sings an octave low on everything. Mm An octave on a, a full octave? Because that's pretty cool. That's it, 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 he does. He just, it, we have this constant ostinato drum. <laughs> so, and so we're working on it. But, you know, he's cute and he sings with gusto. Mm-hmm. He does. And I'm so glad to have him in choir. And, but it, it's just, it's, it's tricky sometimes, you know. So we have to play with that. And he gets up there sometimes, but then he goes back to the drum. <laughs> Anybody else have any other common issues? Sitting up tall. Just Sitting up tall. Okay, we're going to talk about that in just a minute. I'm going to pass you a warm-up. I did not write this warm-up. I really personally do not know who wrote this warm-up. I learned this years ago. I researched this, still could not find the writer of it. Uh, One of the college interns at our church that worked in our children's choirs, she said, I'm going to write that down because I want to have that as a resource in my choir. So she went home and got on Finale, and she, we had sung it 300 billion times. <laughs> so she wrote it out, and so she has my permission to for you to have this today. But anyway, say what I say, chocolate cookie, chocolate cookie. Chocolate cookie, chocolate cookie. Chocolate cookie, yum, yum, yum. Chocolate cookie, yum, yum, yum. Chocolate cookie, chocolate cookie. Chocolate cookie, chocolate cookie. Chocolate cookie, yum, yum, yum. Chocolate cookie, yum, yum, yum. An Oreo. An Oreo. A chocolate Oreo. A chocolate Oreo. I love the creamy middle. I love the creamy middle. Of a chocolate Oreo. Of a chocolate Oreo. Now, has anybody sung this or learned this anywhere? You have? Do you know where you learned it? Well, I, I, I learned it from a workshop at TMEA, but the melody of it comes from another song called Sarah's Fonda. It does. It does. It does. It does. But what I'm saying is there's it's one of those things that you go, I don't know where. And I, we tried to research it, but we couldn't find it. Anyway, I'm going to ask you to take one of these. And then I'm going to ask you to, we're going to sing it, and then we're going to talk about some things that we can learn from it. So t- and I, is there a, somebody that would play it on the piano for us? It's just the melody. It's very easy. Okay, come up. Just take one and pass it. <laughs> and I'm sorry I didn't have these already in your seats. It's just we've had so much stuff I didn't want to get lost. Just play through the melody for a minute while they're getting this. <laughs> I want you to 
you to raise your hand when you think that singing the song, it would obviously have to throw them into their head voice. All right, listen, listen to her play it again. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So you now have a new 
as a prop though, I decided to take toilet paper rolls and I decided to cover them with the fun tape. And you could have this be an early arrival activity and have a bunch of different kinds of the fun tape. Like, you know, they make it with minions on it. They make it with um, just all kinds of designs, polka dots, leopard <coughs> designs, whatever. But have this as an early arrival activity and have this with, uh, the, they would put their name on it because they would always use this one when they were doing something related to consonants. But I'm calling this a consonant catcher. And um, in this song, when you get to the parts where you think the consonant would be catching, you'll be looking for those sounds, <clears throat> then you put the toilet paper roll up and just try to get those sounds to be focused through the hole. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And then that hopefully would give them a, a little bit of a prop to be a little bit focused with that. I want you to listen to the song first, then we'll go back and do it in just a minute, but I want you to listen and think about the singing skills that are in there. Also, as you listen, I want you, when you get to those constant parts, to pretend like you've got a constant catcher and you're catching those. So here we go. and trying to think about those different things. What singing skills were already written in there? What what things that we really want them to do? What was in there? Back up straight. Back up straight. Okay. What else? Tall, Tall mouth. mouth. And Tall north and south. Articulate. 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 Uh, what? Sparkle. Sparkle with your eyes. What else? Concentrate. Concentrate. And I think sometimes we can't overdo the teaching of the fact that it takes concentration to be a good singer and we were talking about in another session how do you relate that to it takes talent and ability to be an athlete but it takes the same kind of talents and ability to be a singer and the more with your little boys that you can and girls that you can do that that will be good too so let's sing it this time and focus on those things and I'm going to show you some things that, to help you uh, with those sparkly eyes in just a second so here we go Stand or sit with back up straight. Tall mouth, north to south. No lazy lips articulate. that are things that we want to have super singers and strong singers do. Those are things that 
we have to constantly teach. They've made another set of posters in the curriculum. This is for the older children that has some of these same ideas, but they give you posters rather than just the individual singing skills. So, eyes on the director, open mouth, that's that idea of the north and south. Focus, stand tall, target your tone, breathe deeply, arch the phrase. I noticed in reading the book that Christy Elsner did that she had an idea about getting the kids to stand tall. And she had an idea that I hadn't thought about. How many of you thought about using stickers to help with that? And this is what I'm going to share with you now. I found these really cute emoji stickers. So um, we'll just pass these around and let you get some. But she suggested stickers as a way to help with several things, and I had not thought about using stickers in this way. But I'm going to try this in the fall. You know how sometimes you might be letting the kids listen to a piece before you actually work on it, which is key to mm -hmm. let them kind of hear it maybe ahead of doing some different work on it. Well, you could have them practice the sitting tall while they're listening, and you could go around and she put a sticker on every person's shoulder that was sitting in the correct position. So I hadn't thought about that. Have, have you thought about that? But I thought that was a great idea. So take one if you want to take one and um, enjoy those. Another idea with the stickers is like when you're standing, when you're teaching kids how to stand for singing, or when you're teaching kids how to stand for singing and you're wanting to make sure that they are keeping their hands where they need to be. I don't know about you, but we had the hardest time sometimes. We want to do this, we want to do this. You know, trying to get those hands where they need to be. If you, if you did maybe a couple of weeks prior to the time that you were going to be singing in worship or prior to getting ready for some kind of informants that you're going to invite parents to or some kind of worship time, have them all take at least two stickers and put them where their hands need to be and help them remember where their hands need to be. And that would just be a really good way because you can say, oh, are your hands, are your stickers finding their hands? You know, and so that's just another way to help them remember. So standing tall um, with the back up straight and sitting tall with the back up straight. Another thing with the stickers, you know how sometimes with... Um, sparkly eyes and getting them to raise their eyebrows and getting them to sing with expression is tricky. Um, maybe putting a sticker up here so that they focus and they concentrate. <laughs> just, just during worship. We would not be wearing these to during choir. We would not be wearing these to worship. But during choir, during choir, we would do this. And so as a result, that would just, again, give them that focus that they need to have. And if you have children that you think can handle this, obviously don't do that. But just the whole idea about using props and gadgets is focusing their attention so that they concentrate on what they need to to help do the task at hand to prepare for the piece. And so that's just another way to use stickers. Now, the pipe cleaners. Grab your pipe cleaner. All right. I want everybody to make a shape that you think you could sing. Make a shape that you think you could sing. If you don't have one, I have plenty, I think. There's some right there. Uh, yes. Do you mean the shape of our mouth or like a it, vocal uh, pattern? Oh, this is going to be a vocalese. Okay. So make a shape that you think you can sing. All right. I want you to sing my shape. And you, this is a lower sound. Just so start. I'm, I'm just going to see where you start and see what happens. Ready? Here we go. Did it match it? Mm -hmm. All right, now I'm going to take mine and uh, you come up right. This is what you do with the children 
you would have the, you would do several of these, and then you let them make their own, and then you put them together. So do ours together. This one and then that one. Ready? Go. Ooh. So then you could keep adding on, and you could you could do this with the whole choir if it's not too big. Now, if you've got 50 voices, I wouldn't do that. But, but what I'm saying is, you know, just another way to let them be involved in the process and focusing on where the sound is going and how am I in control of that sound. And also getting them to start and stop as a at a designated time. That's real important. So this would be another activity to do with that. If you didn't think you had time during rehearsal to do this, or you didn't think you had time to do this ahead of starting your warm-ups, have this be an activity that they come in and do when they early arrive. Have them make some shapes, have some samples at the a little table that said, uh, we're going to be singing what we can make, what shapes we can make with the type singers and then let each person make one to take it back to their seat. And then you say, I'm going to be looking for some super singers to share theirs. But super singers have to be showing me that they are concentrating, that they are sitting tall, that they are doing all of our singing skills. You get to do that. So that's one thing to help with that. Now, I learned this this summer at a drumming conference. I went to a drumming conference. And uh, we last week at our church, we did a drumming <coughs> camp. Our church does a fine arts camp every summer, and we did a drumming camp. We bucket drum, we can drum, we did everything. It was called a whole lot of drumming going on. We did drumming. But anyway, at the drumming workshop, I had not ever thought about a way to use these shakers that we use at ball games or get when we go to games. But the person that was doing the drumming asked us all to play rapidly, really fast at the end of a piece, and that was called a rumble. And so he said, May, and he had a shaker like this. He said, make your sound like the shaker. And so we all had sticks, and we were going wild with them when the shaker went off. But then he also did something with this to help us with um, learning about dynamics. So I had not thought about this, but he said you could use a pom-pom with dynamics. So you could use it with singing, too. So let's just take a song that we all know. Would you give me an F? Let's see. Uh, sing for me, Are You Sleeping? Here we go. Are you sleeping? Are you sleeping? to show a dynamic change in that piece? What do you think? On the, on the repeat. repeat. Yeah. On the repeat. So mm -hmm. do you want the repeat to be louder or softer? Soft. Softer, okay. So what we would do is we would start to use the shaker this way and use the pom-pom on the first phrase, sing it loudly. That doesn't mean fast, just loudly. And this would be softer. Okay, get ready. Are you sleeping? Are you focus to a piece. You could also use the pom-poms. He did not do this, but I think you could use it for phrasing. So phrasing, so you could get, you could, and let me show you what I do first before I give this. Take your hands like this. All right, I call this Indian teepee style. And so when we're working on a long phrase and a piece of music, then we do it and we move this way. So, where would we want the first breath to be after the second phrase? Okay, let's try it. Here we go. Are you sleeping? Are you sleeping? Brother John, Brother John, morning bells are ringing, morning bells are ringing, ding, ding, dong, ding, ding, dong. Does that help? Yes. And that is a way that 
that I used constantly with my children to help at, at school and at church to help them see how long the phrase is. You can do it with the body like this. Another thing you can do is sometimes we take a scarf, and I, I thought I might have scarves in this room, but I didn't. Um, but anyway, put the scarf right here, pull it through. Also, if you have the pom-poms, you could do that, and you could have the child do it with you. So, sing that. Are you ready? Are you sleeping? Are you sleeping? Brother John, brother John, morning bells are ringing, morning bells are ringing, ding, ding, dong, ding, ding, dong. So, it's just another way to help with long phrases. Anytime that you can do that, anytime that you can show a visual with that or pull something, let them feel it with their body, then they're going to be more apt to not breathe in the middle of it and energize them and arch the phrase. See that poster over there? That's in older children. And that energize and arch the phrase is going back to that idea of making that one continuous motion without breath. And so this is just something I do. This is not something right here that's in the curriculum, but you see how that fits with what that is? Mm -hmm. And that's showing you a way to show that. Above it, I forgot to mention this a while ago, when we made the uh, vocal easies mm -hmm. with our uh, pipe cleaners. This is one that is in the curriculum. I believe this is in younger children, and it's a roller coaster. So you could tell the kids if you, if you thought that they might have a problem making just if you said make a shape with your pipe cleaner if you felt like they were going to have a problem with knowing what to do and you wanted it a little bit more directed you could say think about making something that makes me think about coming up and down a roller coaster or coming down a slide you know that would be just a way so can someone over there let's let's do that vocal easy with the the roller coaster can somebody point to it that's closer to there start on the left all right ready start mid middle sound ready go that's going to help you get up in that up and down and out of the break over into the head voice that's going to help with that so all right I need somebody to keep me focused on time because I don't know what time we have and I know 25 minutes. 25 okay good I just didn't need to know all right look over here to the soulfish scale in the curriculum um, they make reference to the soulfish scale and there are lots of activities to this. Instead of calling it um, this time, instead of calling it just the scale and just putting the hand signs still right me, they called it soulfish stones. And they mix together the body scale with the different pitches. So I want you to go look at the fifth degree of the scale. So. Notice that it's on the shoulders, the body moves on, and that, I'm picking that one because I don't know if everybody can see. And then me is at your waist. And I want to show you, those of you that teach multiple age groups of choirs, I want you to look at the back real quick. We all know that when you're getting young kids to sing, that you want to really focus on pieces of music that have, that are built around the so me interval or the minor third, which is so key. Well, they have done a variety of activities in preschool, younger and older, to help reinforce that. And they, there's a solfege melodies, where they're, they're singing different little melodies using the solfege stones in um, older children. But this is one for preschool and younger, where they get to feed the dog. <laughs> and we were talking about earlier in the preschool session that you might want to make a little dog house out of um, a little box. And then they draw the bones out. We talked about getting a little bowl, like maybe a, a real little plastic bowl that you would get at a pet store. You laminate the little bones, and then you draw a bone out, and you try to sing it. So um, give me a G, if I'm going to sleep, please. All right, sing after me, me the new. So be, so be, so be, so be.
allow the kids to learn these different patterns and if they sing it accurately you get to feed the dog but the whole idea is getting them to sing the pitches and getting them to sing them more accurately and get them in their beds. You can also have them move to it like this with the so and the me. So, so, me, me, so, 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 me. And that's again using that body scale and the solfege stones that they have to help learn the different melodies. Also, singing games. Singing games help children get their voices and help them learn to become independent singers. I have got a lot of little props that we use in singing games. How many of you have done apple tree, apple tree? Some of you have. How many of you have done, oh, this is my new friend, found this at Dollar Tree, uh, Dory. So we're going to sing about Dory and then Kermit. So anytime you can bring toys in, especially with, with little kids, that's very, very helpful. So I, we're going to just throw Dory and somebody catch it. Yeah. I'm going to throw Kermit. Somebody find Kermit. And I'm not going to throw the apple because I don't want to knock it out. All right, so here we go. Um, I'm going to sing something. I'm going to sing, like, where is Kermit? Where? So everybody sing it with me. Where is Kermit? Where is Kermit? And then if you have Kermit, you're going to sing back to me. Here I am. Here we go. Ready? Where is Kermit? Where is Kermit? And then, then I'm, I, then I'm gonna, you pet, then I'll let you hide him. Somebody said, so give him somebody else. Give him somebody else. Okay. Where is Kermit? Where is Kermit? Here I am. Here I am. And this is gonna be a quick assessment to see who's. They both have their singing voices, but sometimes there won't be a singing voice. There'll be a speaking voice. So that's a great quick assessment to find out who needs some individual instruction. Where is Dory? Where is Dory? Here I am. Here I am. So those kinds of things. And if you have children that went through the stage of having lots of different beanie babies, beanie babies are great to pull back out and use in these little singing games. The apple tree song. Sing After Me, this is in this book by Madeline Bridges, but it's also a folk song. You've probably sung it a million and one times. I'm going to sing it. You sing it back to me. Apple tree, apple tree, apple tree, apple tree, will your apple fall on me? Will your apple fall on me? I won't cry and I won't shout. I won't cry and I won't shout. If your apple knocks me out. If your apple knocks me and out. And you pass it. You typically sit in a circle and you pass the apple around the circle and the key idea is just to get the kids to sing and play a game with an object but passing around on the beat and then when they get to the out you can have the child exit the circle and just sit on the outside of it but what I do because I don't want to have anybody crying in choir or in my classroom I let the person get the out, if they get it on out, it's like they won the game. So they just hold it up really high and wave it. So that's what you do. So lots of different options of that. Um, but singing games are really, really important with children and helping them to sing independently and helping them to learn how to develop their voices. Doggy, doggy, where's your bone? Do you know that one? That's a really good one to do to help kids learn how to sing independently. Matter of fact, I read an article not long ago in Forster's Guild about how we do not do enough of independent singing with our children from preschool on up. And so as a result, we wonder why they're not finding their singing voice. It's because that we do not do enough games with them to help them gain that independence as a vocalist. Let me tell you one other thing I do for blend. I mean, I have, I have trouble with singers blending sometimes. Do you have the prima donnas that want to sing really loud? But, the, but you love it because you're glad they're excited about singing, but you also have to teach kids that we have a blended sound. That's what makes it sound really good collectively. I bring in a plate of brownies some or some kind of little treat sometime, and I bring it in and I put it on a little table. And then to the side of that, I put an egg, the mix, and then you know, a cup of water. And so what we talk about when we try to teach them about blended sound 
is that the brownies, the product that's made is the blended sound. And that the individual components are not blended, but it takes all of those components to make the brownie. Just like it takes all of you singers to make a collective choir sound. And that's a visual that kind of helps kids understand about blending. So I just thought I'd tell I do you that, about that. I do that with a milk sh with milkshake. You, yeah, you could do it. So I'll say, do you like milk? Mm -hmm. Do you mm -hmm. like ice cream? Mm -hmm. Do you like chocolate? Mm -hmm. Well, those are all great. You're all great. You all have beautiful voices, but what's the, the better product? What do you like the most? Oh, I like the milkshake. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I hadn't thought about the milkshake. And they're sixth, seventh, and eighth graders. Oh, so and they love that. They love mm -hmm. that. And yeah, and if I, if you any of you have a cookout nearby, you know that cookouts has great milkshakes. Mm -hmm. So that would be good. Well, thank you for sharing that too. So those are some things on blend. Now I've got something I want you to get to make and take with you. I have what is called a singer kit. And I just came up with this because at the beginning of the choir year, I was trying to get the kids to remember things that we need to have to know all choir year long. So that first week after we do our uh, promotional activities to get everybody engaged, I had the older children's choir at our church and so we developed this little singing kit. So we talk about these things. And so I give them a copy of this and I give them a Ziploc bag. And so can you get those Ziploc bags that are right there on the floor? Let, 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 let. There's some oh, Ziploc yes. bags. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if I have enough. If I do not have enough, we'll just go as far as we can, but maybe take one per church. Um, but anyway, I'm going to pass these out. And um, these are things to help them remember. So I'm going to get... Yeah, I was going to ask my, my trustee helper to help me with this. Find the airheads. And a lot of times, a lot of times we think we've taught things and we have mentioned them, but maybe we've not reinforced them. So if at the beginning of the year you could teach things and constantly reinforce them through the activities and visuals and going in grace, and then the anthems that you are teaching, and reinforce these singing skills, then they'll become internalized with the children. So the first thing is, and I'll let you pass these out. Is I have them have an airhead. All right, now what are these singing skills, before you get it, on the page, what do you think it's going to help us remember? <laughs> Don't be an airhead. <laughs> that is true. What, el what else can you think? Back up. Back up straight, and also the north south of the mound. So you can teach those two things: back up straight, north south of the mound. So, um, and I say, sit tall, back up straight, feet on the floor. So if y'all pass those around. Then the second thing goes into like the head voice and then also the tongue. Have you ever given children a Hershey's kiss and tried to get them to sing a song while holding the Hershey's kiss on their tongue? What it does is it makes the tongue, it makes them lift up in the back. So that's a way for them to feel that open space in the back. So make your tone as clear as a bell, use your head voice. <laughs> And I don't have Hershey's Kisses because I felt like they would melt on the plane. <laughs> but um, anyway, then the next thing, Smarties. Oh, this is the not airhead one. No! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Not, exactly. Uh, and let's see, someone read what it says about Smarties. Someone be our volunteer reader. To be a good singer, you must think and listen to those around you. Have your music in hand, even though you think you already know the song. Oh, yeah. oh and I, I don't know. I don't know about you, but sometimes we have singers that they hear it one time, they think you've already got it, and we are constantly talking about that. You know, we're going to be using our music to learn about what the composer says about dynamics, what the composer says about how the form is working in a piece. So, 
I, if they ever say they don't need the music, I, my constant comment back to them is, well, I need my music, and I know you're going to need yours too. And also, if they say, but we've already sung this song, I say, well, have you played a video game more than one time? <laughs> and usually that gets them to realize that, hey, we can do it more than once. And then pencil, mark your music to help you remember changes in dynamics and form. And then the eraser on the pencil. Mistakes can be corrected. Be ready to sing the music more than one time. And as you look in the teaching strategies or the session plans that we write with Growing in Grace, you'll see that as the writers write the stuff, they'll introduce something maybe one week. Then the next week they'll come back to it. And then the next week they'll do something else with it. That is on purpose. So that you're seeing the music from different vantage points. And then peppermints. You see the peppermint? And then we'll, we'll, we'll pass the actual lifesaver. Sorry. Lifesavers. Let's see uh, who can read for me about the lifesavers. Read it for me. Remember to sing clear vowel sounds and pronounce your consonants distinctly. Good diction is truly the lifesaver for singers. Is it? Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> it is. And so I came up with this to help my children's choirs remember these things. And we go over this at the beginning of the year. We take time to go over this. And then at the end of choir, they take this home with them. And I write a note to the parents telling them why I gave them these things and why I wanted them to have this. And that this, these are things that we're going to be working on all year as good singing skills and these are things that I want them to remember. And then the peppermints. Somebody read about the peppermint. They require a little bit of work in the We need each of us to regulate it in children's mm -hmm. choir rehearsals so that when we sing, we sing a little bit more. And that's true. Mm -hmm. And everybody is important. And, you know, sometimes we, like, we'll have some children that might miss a couple of weeks and we need to constantly outreach to them and outreach to those parents. Because a lot of times, sometimes people think that you don't miss them. And you know, that, that missing two or weeks can become a month and then you don't see them. And so if we can outreach to our families, that is a really, really good thing. So, yes. I sometimes write my mind, my mind in, I say, you know, uh, thank you for your commitment. Oh, what yes. Like that that's a great, that's a great. That's a great idea, too. Now, one thing that I realized that we did not go over is the straw for the breath. The straw for the breath, and I use the colored straws because I like the colored straws. But kids have got to feel that expansion, and if you'll put your straw in your mouth, and I'm going to ask you to take a deep breath and feel your rib cage expand. To try to teach them about the deep breathing that it is necessary for singing. So I'm going to count to three, and then I want everybody to take a great big, like you're trying to get the, the end of that milkshake we were talking about. Ready? <laughs> One, two, three. And then, now do it again, this time, Take one hand, hold the straw, the other hand, feel what happens on the side. One, two, three. Did you feel something happen here? Did you feel something happen here? That allows them to feel that, and they've got to know how that feels to know if they're doing it right. You know, we say, breathe deeply. Well, what does that mean? Yeah. Well, then you've got, they've got to have an experience base to help them do that, and as I said, Using the props, using the different things that we've shown you today, hopefully, will help with some of those things. They don't always work, but as I said earlier, if you can give them something to energize the rehearsal, if you can give them something that um, helps them put a mem memory or a mental image with a concept that you're trying to teach, that is invaluable to you throughout the whole choir year. So do you have any questions? Do you have any comments? Many times when after I use a straw, I use a balloon, a smaller balloon, and I talk about how our, our lungs, our air sacs, <coughs> fill up with that air, yes. a small balloon. We want, we want to be home. 
parents of ours hate that irritating sound. Well, that's what we have to do with our, our lungs. We let that air out just a little at a time. And then we sing. Otherwise, we let them all at once. You know, you have to let exactly. Them a little go. Exactly. That's what happens to your phrase. You don't have one. Exactly. So this is a very nice one to kind of time both together. It but is. A visual always. Yeah. A visual always. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the phrasing. That, <coughs> that is. Yeah. yeah. That is just going to be. And then one other thing. This ball won't stay. We should get <laughs> with the hair in it. But anyway, I don't know if it got messed up or what. But anyway, another way with children to get them vocalizing and getting them is to actually throw the ball to them and have them make the sound that the ball's doing in the air. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you tried that in a rehearsal. Mm -hmm. It will have to be, you will have to tell them, you will have to prep them before you do this. <laughs> you don't just, and, and you always, this is another thing with children, and you know this, we get what we ask for. <laughs> so if you do not, and they, for those of you that are beginning teachers in the room, um, I always tell the student teachers that I supervise that if you do not, if they will do it the way you explain it. And so if it doesn't successfully work, then it means number two, you didn't leave, you didn't give them enough directions to do it the way you asked. And then also, you may have not been clear with your directions. So anytime you're doing something, you always make sure that you prep it first. So you would probably get a child up and model what you're going to do. Have one child, you pitch the ball to the child, and the whole choir follows the vocal movement. Can you come and do it with me? And I might throw it kind of high to her because I want to see what you're going to do. So ready? Woo! All right. If you trust that child, <laughs> and I trust her, she's a really good, um, you might let them do it. Now you have to tell them, I trust you, and you might find them ahead of time, ahead of time before choir starts, say you're going to be my partner to do an activity. I need you to be the model. And say so you're going to throw it to the group, and we're going to see what you throw. But if it's out of control, the ball's gone. And if it gets out of control, immediately take the ball. Mm -hmm. You have to do what you say. That's the only way you maintain control. So you find somebody that looks like they're ready. <laughs> Ooh. Mm -hmm. And then you find someone that looks like they're ready. Ooh. Uh -huh. And you find someone. Ooh. And then you find someone. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> okay. but, you, but you see how... The, yeah. <laughs> See how that can be a fun way to kind of warm up. Another thing, can somebody tell me about our time real quick? Five minutes, okay. Stand up. I'm going to teach you a warm up that I just do. This just kind of came to me one day. Sometimes things just come to you. You go, okay, I'm going to try this. All right, now, um, I want you to turn to the left, your left, and I want you to uh, do light. Light, and I'll, I will model this too, so that nobody's beating anybody up. Light karate chops on a person's shoulder. Light karate chops. So we'll, we'll break this apart. All right, now when I say turn, turn. Do the same thing. All right, now. All right, turn and face me, and then we're going to put something together. All right, and I hope I don't start this too high. Um, the Jeopardy Melody. Oh, here we go, ready? So I call this my Jeopardy warm-up. So here we go. What you're going to do is you pop up on your toes on the highest pitch. So here we go. The karate chop. On oh, blue, ready? Here we go.
so my kids, on um, some Wednesday nights, if we don't do Jeopardy, they feel like they've not come to choir. So anyway, that's just a, a one uh, little thing to kind of help you. So I hope you gain some warm-ups, some props, and some strategies to help you get your choir year off to a good start. I have thoroughly enjoyed you being in here, and best wishes for your choir year. If you